Thanks so much for joining us for Arise America. I'm Francesca Maxime in for Debbie Turner Bell. Well, in Turkey, the fallout from an ongoing high level corruption investigation is threatening the government of Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Erdogan reshuffled his cabinet Thursday following the resignation of three government ministers, all entangled in the scan scandal. Earlier, I spoke with Sevgi Urkarshirme, a daily columnist with the Daily Zaman newspaper in Turkey, about what happens next. So what do we think is the likelihood of the possible resignation of Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan at this point? It's not likely at all. Uh, Erdogan still has very, very high p popular support. Uh, this is not about whether the, the Prime Minister is stepping down or not. Uh, there is a judicial, uh, there, is a, there is a struggle going on between the executive and the judiciary in Turkey. And uh, following the corruption probe last week, the government has openly uh, intervened, intervened in the judiciary by making changes, uh, which is uh, blocking further investigation into the corruption probe. And the prime minister displays the situation as a plot, an international plot with domestic uh, collaborators in Turkey and trying to uh, sell that argument to the pub public. So it's not, he's in a very defensive position. It's not going to happen. He's not going to resign. Okay, he's not going to resign right now, but he also says that people are really looking into uh, things that his son may have done. Why is that? Who is his son, Erdogan's son, and why are they looking at him right now? Mm -hmm. his, son, um, his son is Bilal Erdogan. Uh, he's a Harvard graduate. Actually, he studied at Kennedy School of Government. Uh, he also did his undergraduate degree, in, I guess, in Indiana University. Um, so uh, upon returning to t Turkey, uh, he's, he has been... Um, working with his his father actively, uh, you know, participating in the in his trips, in his meetings, uh, like one of his his daughters. But no one was really sure. Um, people did not really know about his business connections up until recently. And there is there are allegedly right now there is um, a, an allegedly an, investi an invest investigation is going on about his. Um, request from the um, municipalities to change the zoning rules. All right. Well, that is, um, you know, one probe that continues. But let's talk about the opposition. Who's sort of leading the charge? We know that Erdogan says that uh, this probe into uh, his office and uh, the judiciary, the police, like you say, uh, that it kind of is amounting to almost a bit of a coup. Who is this opposition? Who is leading this charge? Uh, he is definitely not talking about the political political parties. Um, the political parties, opposition par political parties, are extremely weak in Turkey. Uh, even the even the uh, main opposition party. So what he he is targeting the Hizmet movement actually, and everybody he's uh, in veiled comments. He does not directly call uh, the Hizmet movement is. Um, the movement, the social social movement that is inspired by the teachings of Islamic scholar Fethullah Gülen, who is in a self-exile um, in Pennsylvania. Uh, even though he does not directly name him, everybody knows that uh, Erdogan holds this movement responsible for the um, investigation but because they... of its ties in the in the police force, in the judiciary, alleged. And we do know that Fethullah Gulen has a large following, obviously, in, you know, the United States, around the world. Uh, he also has a lot of business interests, and they had been closer at one point. And what is causing this rupture, do you think? Uh, first of all, let me clarify. Fethullah Gulen himself, the respected Islamic scholar, has no, uh, you know, he, he does not have any businesses himself. Uh, there are people who have been, uh, you know, uh, following his... Um, uh, he, he, who are inspired by his, his, by his teachings, who are opening schools and uh, uh, companies around the world. Um, going back to your question again. My question is, is they were not always at odds. So what perhaps has caused uh, this fissure? It's about, it, it, it's not about uh, Erdogan or his party, his ruling AK Party. It's about principles and the changing nature of the AK Party. AK Party has been becoming more and more... Um, dominant and authoritarian, unfortunately, in the recent years. And they have been intervening, uh, you know, they have been uh, weakening the uh, separation of powers in Turkey. So that's why, that's the reason why um, there is a widening gap between the Hizmet movement and the, and the government right now. And also there is this decision of the government to, to close down the private prep schools, which are, um, a significant portion of them are owned by the people who are followers of uh, Fethullah Gülen. 
So that was a, a, a very that had a very negative impact uh, on the relations. I see. All right. Well, then, um, given that, we know that it's been a challenging year for uh, Turkey, and we know that uh, there were uh, protests in the parks initially at the beginning of the year, and, and now uh, there's this kind of turmoil. Where do you see this going uh, in terms of, uh, you know, from here on out? Uh, it's true that it has been a very rough year for Turkey. Uh, the protests um, had shaken Turkey, you know, in the, in the, throughout summer, uh, and uh, it was a reaction it was a manifestation of growing frustration with the government. And right now there is a growing frustration among different segments of society um, towards Erdogan himself specifically, actually. Uh, we don't really know where, where it's going. You know, it's, it's early to tell because um, anything could happen anytime in Turkey. Uh, politics change. Uh, very swiftly. Um, so, but we know that all I can say is that the tension is is likely to rise until the local elections in March. All right, Sergey Arkasheshme, thank you so much, a uh, columnist you. with the uh, Daily Zaman uh, newspaper. We appreciate your time. Thank you.